just talk about you playing Star Fox. Oh, Star Fox. So tell and us furries. other things happening in gaming. Yeah, catch us. I don't know, like, so... What virtual you, reality. Yes. Virtual reality is one of the biggest conversation in gaming. Yeah. But it's also the thing that hasn't quite penetrated into the mainstream yet because it's expensive. expensive. <laughs> and people don't have money, like... Mm -hmm. So while the technology is catching up, the culture hasn't quite gotten there yet. I don't know if I really buy that, though, because if it was really so, ex like, we say it's expensive to prevent people from getting their hands on Oculus Rift, but at the same time, what's the real difference if code theoretically costs the same amount? It's ones and zeros. So, like, so, if, if you're going to do a customizable algorithm to give you targeted ads on Facebook, right. why can't they expand VR to make it more expensive? Well, so I think that the stuff is that right now, that a lot of the production stuff is... One, it's coming from companies that have never made hardware before in that way. So someone like Sony can produce a headset that's a lot cheaper because they have factories where they've done... They're used to making it for a mass audience. So their stuff is, for instance, a lot cheaper and a lot more affordable. They're slippy. Whereas They're slippy. a snippy. company... Snippy. Snippy toad. A Japanese version. Oh, it's different? Yeah, okay. Um, Cornelia. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Wait, you skipped the voiceover? It's so I'm sorry. It's nostalgia. No. Start over. Oh. <laughs> I want you to see it. I want you to see it. That was This is how it was my whole life. It was me and three guys sitting around playing video games. <laughs> Someone waits and hammers on the restart. You wanted button, to see the I'm... intro. <laughs> and we wonder why he's not playing video games. It's not. Fine. All right, so we there are other I have other questions. Are we are we I still want to hear more about VR. Sure. What do you want to know about it? Let's um, talk. So what's the, what is the best possible game on VR right now? Like the best possible experience? That's also part of the problem, is that like, there's just not, not that much to play on these things yet. Like it's all like pretty experimental. Uh, it's like all pretty experimental. There's like really cool ideas. But, like in terms of things, I usually think of a video game like, oh, I can stand and play this for hours and hours and hours. Like yeah. VR is just, beginning to figure out what that is. Like, it's all very early. It's promising, it's Which is the most exciting stuff, is like artists who are using it to create things that are not just trying to do what other video games are trying to do, but are, uh, you know, trying to play with perception and, and play with, uh, the one thing I've actually noticed that's been really surprising is how important writing has been to a lot of these VR experiences, where, you know, the interaction mechanisms aren't great a lot, but someone who writes a really funny script, that will carry it a long way. Yeah. So a game like Job Simulator, which is a, a game in which you play a human in a world where they're, you're the last human, everyone is robots, and you put on a VR helmet inside of the world, and it presents a sort of simulation of what the robots believe human jobs to be. And it's all just really sharp, witty writing. Is like really being a charming. mechanic or like like a 7-Eleven, like, like, like jobs that would be automated. It's like, what did humans used to do? Right. Don't do that job. Do that it's, like, job. it's like a fucked up weird version. It's like, like, you know, an interpretation 100 years later, like what your skewed version of that job would have been. And that's really fantastic and funny and clever and like, oh, right, like this is just good writing plus the, the sense of presence of being in this space. And that stuff is really cool. Yeah, and I like the big thing is, uh, what's fascinating about it is like, the language of how you make this stuff isn't set yet, right? So like so, so many other mediums, like you kind of have a, a set of tools that you can work with, a foundation, something to look back on. VR, there's nothing. It's like everyone's starting fresh. And so like things fail, but like they're interesting failures because you learn something in the process of like what works. This is our big pitch for VR. Even though like, I'm kind of a skeptic, but like that's totally. I want it like to. I desperately want it to be interesting um, because you have like experiences every once in a while where you see, like you see it. You're like, this could be amazing, and they could also really fuck this up. Mm -hmm. And it could just be like 3D. Like, oh, 3D is gonna be amazing. It's like, well, like one or two. Avatar was all right, I guess. And like other than that, you know. I guess. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Are you paying attention? Yeah, I'm paying. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's just soothing to hear the voiceover. General Pepper. General Pepper of the Cornerian Army. Yeah, turn this up. Third planet. Venom. I am. Um, I'm really excited. I like how, especially in the last like 20 or 30 years, you've seen developments in technology follow sci-fi and cyberpunk so closely that like terms like the Matrix and Microsoft come from William Gibson. Yeah. So I think now that totally. Steven Spielberg started shooting on Ready Player One right. Right. a month ago. Yep. So I feel like this Google Glass failed so fucking badly. Seeing how they do the Oasis system in Ready Player One might actually end up informing how they do like second. Well, I mean, Minority Report like directly influenced like so much technology in the last like 15 years. Crazy, so, like, right? Uh, 
and they're all just kind of still feeling that stuff out. Uh, like that, that the ideas are finally catching up with right, what like, technology can actually do. Like uh, AR, augmented reality, which is like the separate conversations, like virtual reality, you strap on a screen, right? Augmented reality, where it's like, you know, you know, in 10 years, Austin's glasses, right. like there's going to be information It's the Google around. Glass thing, but actually functioning and working the way yeah. you see in short films and, and in Black Mirror and a bunch yes. of other stuff that has used it uh, pretty well. Yeah. That are people are working on that stuff. Two I'm not sure. Oh. You hand the controller off when at lives. That's what I used to do when I only had hand one controller. Right. <laughs> um. So you're flying. You are flying. I'm flying. Oh so my shoot the guy. God, I miss this game. Oh. It's true. Oh, this was my prop. This is probably my favorite game ever. It's very Honestly. good. Very good game. Honest to God, and there's so many secret worlds and secret yep. characters. Do you think you still remember the things you have to do to get into any of the secrets? No, I don't. Sometimes it's like oh, go to a cave yeah. to the left. Yeah, or I like go through yeah, all yeah, the yeah, rings yeah, in yeah. an area. Like portal. I, my dad used to get me. Um, oh, I'm having no weird power. deja vu. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Are you having a moment right now? Yeah. Oh, but I like it a little though. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a, like a, it's a good moment. A good and other memories are coming up that are bad. That, that's the VR oh. experience. I want <laughs> is the one that's just like, we know enough about human experience of, of you put in some some data about your life, and then they're gonna generate something that feels a little bit like deja vu. I think yeah, oh. there's like a lot of indie games that I feel like their only endpoint is to evoke an emotion that you can't separate yourself from, like games that purposefully crushed, Ooh. make right. you feel secondhand <laughs> embarrassment, crushed. or like despair. <laughs> I'm thinking of that one specific game that people were writing about a while ago where like no matter what you do and how well you do, you're still going to die at the What's end. The or like sea? the person you love will still die at the end. Uh, Passage by Jason Rohrer, yes, probably. Yes, that's what it is. Uh, which is like one of those things that's like, oh wow, like games can do that too. Of course, and, and then like, thankfully I think we're finally at the point now where it's like, oh yeah, of course. Like it's a thing a human's made, it's culture. Yeah, it can make us feel shitty. Like, Everyone's read David Brooks by now. It's, right, yes. Like, we're all into self-analysis. Oh, exactly. Not... Ushering in the new era of oh. some kind of music. Don't run into things. I thought that those are, some things Live you're supposed life. to run into, though. <laughs> it's not sound advice. So you can definitely lock on with, uh, what's your, what's the missile button? I don't actually. remember. Do you remember? That's uh, it, you got it. I think it might, That's be, it. I think it might be the B button. To a barrel roll. There it is. Ooh. You don't Whoa. see. So do you think, you know, when you think about something like Ready Player One, Oof. that's a that's a, a book that is like has its dystopic elements, but I think also fundamentally really likes the notion of technology and like is interested in depicting it in a really sexy way. Um, whereas you look at something like Gibson stuff or you look at something like um, uh, super sad, true love story. Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh wow, no, we're gonna fuck ourselves up on this. Or Black Mirror. Or Black Mirror. Yeah. Right. See, I don't know. I think How do you Gibson feel? is implicitly more hopeful than Ernest Cline or anything mm -hmm. Black Mirror would ever have to offer. And I think it's seen in his marginalized characters. Sure. William Gibson and Neil Stevenson, especially, like really yeah. pop off where Ernest Cline falls short. But, you know, I don't think there would have been a Ready Player One. What the fuck is the main character's name in that? Parzival. Yeah. There wouldn't be a Parzival without a YT, yeah. like Snow Crash. Mm -hmm. Oh, especially like all these, like, I mean, anyone who's watching this is gonna hate me. I hope you like playing video games. We're just gonna talk about this now. <laughs> but hey, listen, um, you got me talking about cyberpunk. I'm there's, in a war this, right now. Yeah, we're good. No, West no one is supporting me. There's, I'm, I'm supporting the shit out of you. I'm just saying, there's I'm in a no war There's no Westworld right without Snow Crash. <laughs> yeah, no one's concerned about this war. Everyone's just talking about Snow Crash. Yeah, right, like, yeah Westworld is Snow Crash and Mr. Robot is, is Stranger Things and it's all. It's all like the cyberpunk stuff. Totally. Because now it's sci it's not science fiction, it's science present. Right. Like we, they're using the available technology to tell the stories that they started in the Whoa. 1990s. Right, well, like even William Gibson stopped writing strict cyberpunk because he, he kind of has spoken about this as like, oh no, the present is Ugh. it. Like I want to write about now because it's scarier and more interesting. And than... pattern recognition in 2003 exactly. was the 9-11 book, but right. it accurately, it, in, the, in like the sidekick years, it like accurately predicted social media as we totally. did on an iPhone. Totally. With, what's her name? Case Pollard. Yep. Case Pollard. Now all that stuff is fascinating and like, I want to see more of that angle taken. I'm like really, not nervous, but like I'm not ready yet for people to, for like the wider culture to get into Ready Player One, like to have to deal with that conversation a bunch, where I have to like tiptoe around my dislike of Ready Player One carefully because I don't want to offend someone who really loves it. 
because maybe they like it for reasons that are totally justifiable, and, and maybe they are critical about it in a way that I don't see a lot of people be. Maybe they're having a bad day. It's I mean, also a bad day. Right. That's we need a, escapism has a purpose in a world in which many of us are stuck in really shitty jobs and are you know in in marginalized positions. Like I'm not here to completely dismiss that. But I also, like the only people I ever see talking about Ready Player One Two are adults, right? And like, it's functionally speaking, it's a book for kids. Yeah. And the one, well, the opinions that I want to hear about Ready Player One, here it comes, teenage girls. Sure. Because the book is it skews so heavily male and it skews so heavily oh. it's 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 sexed in right. a way, like it's a sexed book. I think it's completely sexed. I think it's a lot a of the really adult novel, yeah. Stuff between the lead character and his love interest are like. Oh, like this is what I thought about sex when I was 16, and I don't know that that was. I well, can't speak to Klein's intentions. I just went to the panel where Sam Esmail and Christian Slater were talking to the dude from the New Yorker a few weeks ago, and Esmail was talking about the portrayal of female hackers on TV. Sure. He said, you know, John Travolta sucks shit in Swordfish because he's not a believable hacker. He's never dealt with social anxiety a day in his life. Neither is Angelina Jolie, and I'm right. like, okay, first of all, you wrong. Yeah. Second of all, for you immediately to go to Carly Chaikin's character of Darlene right after that is to ignore the fact that she looks bang on like Angelina. Jolie. Jolie. Totally does. So you're really you're talking about like accurate portrayal of male hackers, which you've got, you know, Parzival in Ready Player One, you've got Elliot and and, and, and Mobley and Mr. Yep. Robot yep. and all those cats. But at the same time, like the whole show is you gotta admit it at that point and the whole book and whatever is really just an accurate depiction of what it's like to be a male hacker, complete with the idea that you can build sim style an AI fantasy woman. Mm -hmm. So you've got your accurate male hacker, but, like, but in Ready Player One and in Mr. Robot, like, totally. where's your reference point for female hackers? Well, like, so the now, love interest is just like, she turns out she's just as beautiful in real life. She has a birthmark. Of course. Shut the fuck up. Yep. So in games, that's actually been a thing this year twice. Uh, one is a game called Beglitched, which has kind of a, uh, a twee punk aesthetic, or a kind of a, a cyber twee aesthetic, rather, which is like cyber twee is a oh, thing. Yeah, cyber twee is a thing. You just too. gave me the a word for me. Uh, cyber cyber twee. Yeah, the cyber twee manifesto was published last year. It's There's a word for fuck. me. It's so good. I love it. um, and then there's another game that came out called Quadrilateral Cowboy, which already is like a dope name. And it's about a trio of women hackers who like, go through their lives. Uh, and the way the game works is like a combination of... This is taking a very long time, guys. I love I, you got it. I believe in you. I believe in your ability to kill this boss. Yeah, this is the game you play to play, not the game you play to win. True. It's, it's nice. It's, I like a game where you, you can mash buttons and feel like you're still doing stuff. Like, you haven't died. Just, that's I true. haven't died. That is true. You have a bunch of bombs. There's a button you have that is just gonna. You have eight bombs. I think you can. You should use do those. A lot what, do, what do you? How do you do those? You bomb the boss. B. B. Maybe B. Maybe B. Yeah. Maybe R. Maybe one Try of the. Try to drop the bomb. There it is. Okay. You got it. Ooh. That did an all right. That did an all right hit. No. Dude, he's down to almost half. See, the turning radius not so great. You there's a. There's ways to do quick turns in this. And I just don't remember because it's been too long. Oh God, missing. It's okay, you guys get back to your. Well, I think the Cowboy's very good. You should check it out. Well, I think mean, one of the things that concerns me about like the Ready Player One adaption is like if it was like Spielberg of like the 70s, I'd have a lot more. Uh, sure. A, confidence that there'd be a little more nuance or maybe uh, implicit critique in the way he adapts it, but like, I, see, I still think he's a like pretty great director, but he's not the guy he was in the 70s and 80s. Right. I just don't think he has that touch. So I'm and the afraid casting it's gonna be is like, a nightmare. A, right. It's going to be like yeah, a fairly direct a adaptation that it, that even more sexualizes, like, <laughs> because in a cinematic fashion, it's going to be like, it could be a lot more problematic. The main character is supposed to be an overweight, pimply-faced, sexless nerd until the last, like, until he literally locks himself in an apartment and makes himself walk on a treadmill. Because that's how that works, by the all day. Way. You just will yourself to do it and then just, like, lock yourself in and there it is. Yeah, naturally. It's like when people say that happiness is a choice, I really think they're onto something. <laughs> But yeah, I'll the, think about that one. Yeah, <laughs> like the main character is supposed to be leaders. an overweight teenager, and the, his his sidekick, the reveal at the end again, like mm -hmm. she's supposed to be like a butch black teen lesbian. And you look at the cast, and you're like, how are they gonna come up with this out of that? Is it gonna you know, be another well, Ghost in the Shell? I was gonna say the same thing. I was like, we're, yeah. we're gonna work nerds are only Johansson. gonna give you our money if you tell the truth and you get it like right to the book. Yep. It's like, come on, man. Or if you do an interpretation that's actually valuable in some other way, right? Like, yeah. I would watch, I would watch Ready Player One like through the lens of ET. Like uh, pubescent, like horror of the world is big and large. And I don't understand it. Like I would watch that version of that film. I don't think that's the version we're gonna get. We're not gonna get. We're going to get a, a, what he thinks is a strict interpretation. Yeah. I I hope we don't. But I don't know. I just, I'm. I think, and also, what's it's problematic for Spielberg doing that is because like a lot of that 
book is like deeply influenced by Spielbergian like tropes. Yep. And so it's like it coming full circle. Like there's an, like how can you be critical of your own work yes. in, a, in a work that's influenced by the th stuff that you did? Like that seems really difficult you down, to do. Sir. And Let's, now it's it's got the 80s aspect of it too, with all the references saying. to the films. And you know, oh, it's up. It's my turn. It's your turn. Yeah. I say. Oh the man, world, this is a cool fine. one because you have to. If I remember correctly, you have to shoot the meteors and explode them, and then you can explode the sub meteors mm -hmm. for more. Okay. It's, it's true. You got it. Sub meteor ass. All look at ass. I want to see if this muscle memory come back and just crush it. I doubt it. We'll see. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like the problem is it's going to be another Hunger Games where the book adaptation tries to make like the book has been out for a few years and people have read it and have had time to develop their sort of daily me like mental picture of it. So they're going to kick the technology up and use whatever the most available like newest thing is. Right. When really the book is so rooted in the '80s that what they should be looking at is you know Tron. Oh, I remember this. Right, like you think they should be going. That it should almost feel out of date if, if interpreted correctly. Yeah, and like good out of date technology is a great look. Totally. I mean, this That's is part of why like Blade Runner still holds up because it's all oh, yeah. practical effects and like cool screens. And that every look. band that came out yep. this year sounds like the soundtrack. Absolutely. And you can look at photos from China, and it's like, whoops, that just looks like Blade Runner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this year. In a really depressing okay, way. <laughs> so this way, shit. So what have you been up to? Right so what have I been up to? Yeah, what are you up to like um, this week? This week. Let's get let's get specific. We are going to see my favorite artist, Helado Negro. Ooh. Black ice cream, white people. Um, he is a uh, a musician. He's a, like a down tempo, um, kind of like. He's on Asthmatic Kitty, makes yeah. this okay. really dreamy solo music with like a dance component. Nice. Yeah. Oh, you can do barrel rolls. Like He's uh, lovely. We're going to see him on Wednesday. Nice. Um, Getting ready for election so much, day. Couple, yeah, how, very exciting. How, how ready are you for election day? <laughs> are you working? Um, are you both doing work on election day? I am. I'm not doing anything. I'm doing coverage. You're ready to go. Yes. Okay. I will be in Times Square. So, what is your call time on election voters. day? <laughs> I don't know yet, but I'm really excited. So, you're going to be like talking to voters as they oh, come yeah. out of polls and stuff I'm gonna like that? I'm going to be hanging out and talking to people uh, who have voted as identified by their probably like I voted sticker because that's mm -hmm. cool. People sure. love stickers. People do love stickers. People love stickers. I do, you know, people do a lot of stuff for a sticker. You'll even vote. So, I'm going to go talk to the uh, voting populace. Oh, see how, how do goes. you do the, the upside down? Oh, you flip damn around. Thing. I think it's the up. I think it's the yellow up button. I think it's yellow. No, enough? that's that's not it. It's 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 there. it's a multi-button command, and I don't remember what it is. And you hold one and then flip the up down up, up down up left like right left right A B. Start. Oh, it might be like up up. I don't remember. Yeah. I'm outing myself as someone who has not played Star Fox in the last decade. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm just. Oh my God. There's the law. Mm-hmm. So you're putting it together. Did you guys put this on like ultra easy mode? Because I don't seem to be failing as severely as I, I believe I you're should still, be. Maybe your skills are just better than you remember. That must This be game it. was always uh, designed in a way so that like you, you feel like you're doing a lot of things you're really not doing. Like all of the, yeah. the flying, like it just yeah, sort of flies you around totally. toward things. There's like a cinematic element of just like, yes. oh, we'll communicate the notion that you're doing a lot. But yes. There's That's, a game in VR called Res that is, well, so it was a game that came out on, on the Dreamcast and the PS2 back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and it actually just re-released like six years ago on something else and it just came back in VR. That's similar to this, uh -huh. except the whole thing is based on a sort of like uh, cyberpunk hacking stuff plus mm -hmm. dance music, plus electronic music. And playing it in VR is the one time that I've been just like, oh, I'm willing to use the word transcendent. I never use that word anymore, mm -hmm. but like this was the first time that I felt like, and, and for me, I mean that specifically that like, Again, I'm a VR skeptic, but that experience transcended all of my skepticism about VR, all of the thoughts that I think there are in VR right now, and it just completely overwhelmed me in an emotional way. And when, what they you... were, when they've been showing the game, at certain places, they have this full body suit that you can put on. It's like 12 that, like, or 20 vibrates and like, like on reacts to the music in a way so that like, as you're looking around and you're fully encapsulated in this world, the way the music you know, thumps like you feel that in your whole yeah. body as you put on this suit. What do you think is repeatable? Um, like, you know, that's the whole question that yep. with these experiences, it seems as though you're looking for a thing that you can isolate that works really, really yep. well and that you can repeat. Well, I mean, that's the problem with VR and like the problem of uh, like pulling from things like 70s, like aspirational technologies. Like 
we can create this, but is it a technology in search of an answer? Right. Or like, or is it technology for the sake of technology? Like, we looked at VR conceptualized, you know, by like Gibson and, and 70s films, Tron, and like, that's gonna be so cool. But then once you arrive to it, the technology's here, like, wait, is there actually anything to do? It's and, so bizarre yeah. because all the new developing technologies seem to just be in service of trying to bring humans closer together. Right, well, like, it's very weird. Yeah. Like, the, the, the more mm, that's why Facebook bought the Oculus Oc Oc Rift was like their theory of like in 30 years, like this is our long-term bet that this is how people, you know, Ready Player One, like that that is going to be one possible way that this ends. Yeah, this is not about games; it's about meetings. This yeah. is about uh, real estate. Uh, it's about forging intimacy through algorithms. Which is really scary because we've never needed them before, but now we have them at our disposal. We're so dependent, we want to use them for everything. For me, the thing that I end up going back to a lot, and if people have probably heard me say this before, there's a Canadian, because I went to Canada, I was in school in Canada for a while, I learned about Canadian philosophers and shit. Uh, they're very proud of them up there. <laughs> a guy named Harold Innes, who taught Marshall McLuhan, who's the guy you actually might have heard of. Um, and Innes has this notion of the monopoly of knowledge. Uh, and like the easiest example of I'm that is that like, die. oh, in the in the Middle Ages, only only people of the clergy knew how to write and read, mm -hmm. right? And so they could do things that literally, oh. first death, right? Second Died. death, second death altogether. Uh, they could write and read, which let them have methods of thought that they couldn't, that other people couldn't have. Mm -hmm. That like, you couldn't do Oops. long, you know, you couldn't do like, uh, uh, you couldn't figure out good farming plans if you couldn't take track what happened every day, write it down, refer to what you'd written down. You couldn't make certain sorts of arguments about politics or religion without writing it down, returning to it day after day, day after day, day after day. And that's a way in which writing didn't just give them the skill of writing, it gave them access to sorts of thoughts they couldn't have otherwise. Mm -hmm. And today, the things that are happening in that space are things like having access to huge amounts of metadata and the algorithms and tools to break that metadata down into like actionable information. Um, and I'm curious if we're going to get to a point in something like VR where it's like, oh, like I happen to be at a firm that has a really great VR situation. I'm an architect. I can build stuff with that that nobody else can. I have access to like the city plans in a way that nobody else can. I can visualize that stuff in a way that nobody else can. Or like you were talking about, Patrick, uh, with augmented reality, where like I can literally, going through my day-to-day -day life, have access to like information about you while I'm talking to you about what your birthday was, what your favorite food is, right. what you, that you like the Cubs, like all of that stuff is just like bzz, 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 burned into my head and you don't have that. And that gives me this like very specific upper hand in that interaction. That's my, that's my pitch on how depressing the future might be. You're scaring the <laughs> shit out of me right now. No, we're, but what you're saying, I mean, there, there are versions of that have been happening forever. Oh, and that's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's hard I'm, to know, it's like, is, right. this, is this all us getting old? Right. And then you look at that and go, that's, that's a line too far. Knowing full well that people have said that forever. Sure. And at some point, maybe there is the line too far, but how do you identify well, what that is? And historically, this stuff often happens in these cycles of like, oh, that was too far for a long time. Yeah. And then things caught up, right? Like, you look at the, the movement of Luddites who rebelled against the incoming like autom the technologies of automation yep. and machinery that they thought would take away their jobs. They did take away their jobs. And then those jobs were gone for a long time. And then the economy recovered and new jobs were created around those new economies. But like that didn't, welcome to Waypoint, by the way. Yeah. Those new jobs were video, video games. Video games. Uh, but like that's, that could be a space that we're moving into. There are, there are some economists and some technologists we think that we're moving into a space where automation is such that we will go through a period where lots of people are in a period. I was gonna say, I would say we're in the middle of that, yeah. Totally, I mean, this is part of the- The election right of, now, yeah. The deal of Trump right now is he's speaking to a bunch of people who don't have the sorts of jobs that they expected to have. Um, but it's like you said, there's of that life, monopoly life. of knowledge kind of situation where <laughs> yeah. what's, go I mean, it, this isn't like a past thing. It's totally. like now the issue with public education in the United States is that we're being systematically denied totally. things and everyone's coming out at a deficit and thinking they're educated and no one knows how to code unless they work on it. <laughs> but video games are great and they make <laughs> me happy. And I love Star Fox 64. And capitalism <laughs> should never go away. <laughs> you know what? Capitalism gave me Star Fox 64. You know what? I love Sometimes capitalism. Sometimes it's okay. Uh. Capitalism, sponsored by Nintendo <laughs> and Bitcoin. Yeah, let's talk about augmented reality, like that's not a video game, but is like the video game of cryptocurrency that's going to change sure. everybody's life. That's insane. Your feelings about cryptocurrency? I have so many feelings. What about are your feelings on cryptocurrency? I just think it's lit. I think it's like <laughs> it's lit. I think it's, it's lit. I think it's lit. <laughs> I literally never heard that word used to describe it. 
But now, but now I'm in now I'm in What's here. up with cryptocurrency? It's, it's just lit. Shit's lit. It's awesome. It's gonna liberate crypto so dot many, lit. Like crying it, emoji three times. Yeah, the, basically the <laughs> idea that I mean, currency can't liberate anybody. But right. like, if there was a liberatory currency or like a praxis of liberation that you could apply to like a currency scenario, it like, would be Bitcoin. Doesn't that shit just get captured really quickly? Like the second that that becomes a thing that's valuable, I how isn't there a startup that's just like that shit's ours now? We're gonna be the ones who who give it to everybody and also reap the benefits. The worst case scenario then is that Bitcoin goes the way of the beanie baby. And we're left seeing who's got Rubbermaids full of Bitcoins right. in their basement. That Rubbermaids full of Bitcoins in their basement is a really yeah. good <laughs> mental image. Well, <laughs> it's a really it's, good it's mental the, image. the parallel to like Russians, um, you know, carting Rubles and wheelbarrows. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but like also we're entering... except it's just USB hard well, drives. Yeah, there's that tech thing, but then there's also the prepper thing going on, and so it's totally. like you, you know you can't nice eat you know paper money, but you can't eat Bitcoin either. Totally can't. People to say that one is safer than the other is to predicate itself on the idea that money is safe. Period. To begin with. Which is yeah. wrong. Yeah. Money's not safe. Neither is this laser. What are you doing, man? Laser's fucking you up a little bit. Just, Don't quit just it. Just um, hit it there. Yo, I'm gonna hit it. Yeah, I think you had to dodge left, left and right uh, wide of the, um, the lasers. So go right, go right. Oh, or left. You right. got it, you got, got it. it. You got Come it. Drift homes. back in. I'm no match for you. You're darn right. I think he's fucking with you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. okay. But I, I, I'm, you know, maybe he's, I would. I sense sarcasm in his Yeah, way. he's gonna <laughs> charge oh, a oh, big laser. back of his spaceship. Oh, come on, butthead. I know this level. I love the ship designs Me in too. the Star Fox series so much. Cool. Um, partially just because, like, so, in oh, video games, dick. the ship designs are largely Star Wars or Alien. Right. And, or Aliens, rather. And Star Fox just yeah. feels like People love an homage. totally unique. People love an homage. Sci-fi people love reference. It's like as much about the history yep. as it is about the future all the oh, time. You were so close. Oh, no. Yeah, well, no. I love to die on television. That's extremely convenient go. because... Oh, are we out of time? We're out of time. That was an hour. Oh, that no. was an hour. Um, Man. Sorry, I'm in a so you're going to be, you you're gonna be <laughs> covering the election next week. Yeah. Where else can people follow the stuff that you're doing? What else do you want to tell uh, people about? Any and all of the social media across MTV News, at MTV News on Twitter and Instagram. You can see me usually talking about music and people and things that I like, I guess. Yeah. MTV News and... and playing rock and roll and following this guy everywhere he goes, poking him, saying, hey, hey. Including, including hey. to uh, Des Moines. Including possibly to Des Moines, Moines. to outer quitting. space. Underrated. Quitting. And uh, to quitting. And to quitting. Which what is you? underrated. What's, what's going, what, what do you got going on? Anything you want to let the people know? Uh, I don't know. Just, you know, waiting by the phone for Vice to call to send me places. <laughs> uh, yeah, someone call, someone call, call him. Call him. Send him somewhere. Somewhere. Call me. Send me somewhere. Pay me. What's the, what's the um, last thing you did with, with Vice that people can go I did the... Uh, oh, the Portugal uh, episode just came out. The 2016 so good. Medieval Combat World Championships. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Sounds dope. <laughs> we could have had that whole conversation. We should have asked that, that when we started. True story. Twas lit. Twas, twas lit. Verily, verily, twas lit. Um, <laughs> Yeah, about 100 pounds of armor, uh, people fighting um, with axes, swords, uh, blunt, uh, like, maces. things, maces, yes, yeah. mace is the word. Okay. Um, yeah, strange, hobbies, white people's hobbies. Well, yeah. Hashtag content. Awesome, well, thanks so much for stopping by. Hashtag content is one of our, our catchphrases. That's our so motto. Thank you so much for coming in. <laughs> yeah, this is the course. I am hashtag content. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, well, thanks so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it. The stream continues. We're going to take a break, uh, and we will be uh, right back.